There is already a sweet presence of the Lord in this place. You know, the psalmist says and wrote in chapter 146, Bless the Lord and praise the Lord, O my soul. And I will praise the Lord while I live. How many of you are living this morning? <laughs> if you're standing here, you're living. Just FYI. <laughs> He goes on to say, I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. I want us this morning as we prepare our hearts to recognize that we have the awesome privilege of giving praise to the living God. And that as long as we live, how many of you realize as long as we live, we are in position to see and recognize and benefit from the goodness of our God. As long as we live. So as long as we live, we have, we have every opportunity to sing praises because we are always in a position to receive the benefits of His goodness. So what I want to invite you to do, if you would, with me, is just bow your heads and close your eyes. I want us to pray together. Now, Father, in this place, there is no other reason for our coming together except for you. We're not here to, Lord, just receive the, the goodness of a message or a service. We're not even here, Father, to be ministered to. We're here to be the ones who are ministering to you. But even as the psalmist declared, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Every ounce of my being, let it bless your holy name. So, Father, as we stand in this place this morning, we do so recognizing and we do so with thanksgiving because we know your goodness is everlasting. And Lord, as long as we live and have our being, we have the opportunity to see and recognize in our lives the goodness that you cause to bestow on us. And Lord, we bless you and we thank you and we give you praise. And if you agree with me, lift your voice and give Jesus praise in this place. goodness of God this morning. Amen. Amen. You ready to sing and shout this morning? Because the Lord is good.
he blesses us with his amazing grace. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who sees us breathless in awe and wonder, the King of glory, the King above all kings. This is amazing grace. God, if you are happy for all that he has done for you this morning. We 
we read in the scripture that there was a storm in the lives of the disciples. And Christ walked out to where they were on the water. And when Peter saw that, he said, Lord, if it's you, call me out to you. Peter stepped out of that boat, walked on the water, taking huge risk, trusting Christ. That's where you are this morning, in the midst of a storm. Step out on the water. Keep your eyes focused on Christ. Trust and step out of the boat.
without you, Father. My faith will be made stronger Grow my in faith. the presence of my Savior. Spirit, leave me when my trust is without borders. The pure of the power the waters is where trust you, Lord. Wherever you go, we will follow. If my heart is overwhelmed and I cannot hear your voice, I'll hold on to what is true, though I cannot see. When the storms of life, they come. The road ahead gets steep. I will lift these hands in faith. I will believe. I remind myself of all that you've done. And the life I have because of your son. Love came down 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me invite you, if you would, to just bow your heads and close your eyes. Ever since I walked in this morning, earlier, even before the service began, there was something stirring in the atmosphere of this auditorium. And even during the time that we've progressed into our worship, I've just sensed that stirring intensify. And I just really believe in my spirit this morning that the Lord is speaking. That He wants to consume His people. I want us just for a moment to reflect on a very familiar account in Scripture, in the Old Testament. When the prophet Elijah was brought before the prophets of Baal, there was a competition to see whose God was more powerful. And what they did is they said, okay, build an altar. And Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, you call out to your God. See if he won't send fire down to consume this altar. So the prophets of Baal began to call upon the, the God of Baal, and nothing happened. And so Elijah said, Well, why don't you call a little louder? Maybe he can't hear you. So they cried out a little louder. Still, no response. You know, and Elijah just kept mocking them and saying, well, you know, try harder. Maybe you don't have his attention yet. And so they did, and finally, it stopped. Because the gods of this world are not living. No matter how much we try to offer them, there's no, there's no consumption from a dead, lifeless idol. But Elijah did something. He instructed, after they piled all this wood, he instructed then some of the men there to pour water on this wood. And though there's much that can be said and drawn from this account and what was actually happening, one thing I want to take away from it this morning, and I'm going to ask the worship team to take us to the song that you were actually singing before we even started this morning. It's a song that Demetrius was leading in, and I, I want us to sing this because I believe that this is where God wants to take us. When the water was poured out onto the wood, the condition of that altar was a condition that seemed impossible for any fire to consume. Because we all know in the natural, the element of water is opposite that of fire. And yet, when the prophet Elijah called out to the living God. God caused fire from heaven to come and consume the altar. Say, so, Pastor, what does that have to do with me this morning? Maybe you're standing here and the condition of your life seems to be such that it is impossible for God to consume. Maybe you are looking 
at your own life, in the face of your life, and you're going, well, this isn't really a life that God can consume because I have this issue or I have that or I've done this or I've done that or this is just where I am. This is just the state of my being right now. I'm here to announce to you that when you call on the name of the living God, you say, well, what happens when God consumes me? What happens when fire consumes anything? The state of its being changes the condition of it changes the moment fire consumes it. The condition and the state that it was in prior to fire is something totally opposite once fire has taken it. How many of you realize this morning that when the fire of the Holy Spirit comes upon and consumes you, the state of your being, the condition of who you are, changes in that moment. Because the fire of the Holy Spirit will transform that state, it will transform that condition from one state to another. You're here and you're debating within yourself, if you're a life that God can use, I'm here to declare to you, that your life is one that God has decided, He has elected, He has chosen to use. And so what must I do? You must become the sacrifice for Him to consume. You must become the life for Him to fill. And when He does, everything changes. Everything changes. How many of you are ready for the fire of the Holy Spirit to consume you this morning? Jesus. A few weeks ago, Dave and I were away at a conference, and if you're in the back, you might need to move to the front. <laughs> One of the things that they had us do was they gave us a piece of paper, and they had us write down just some things that we might be struggling with. And I thought, wow, this is so summer camp-ish. On one side, we were supposed to write whatever things we might need to put before the Lord. And I mean, you know, you're the pastor's wife. Surely everything every day is put before the Lord. Oh. I would love to explain this to you. Anyway, I had my little list, surprisingly enough, arrogantly enough. I had my list of things that I needed to put before the Lord. And they had to play sweet worship music. And they had us close our eyes and visualize to take it to the cross that we were to see Jesus and the cross and we were to take this piece of paper and lay it at his feet. So I'm listening to this music and I'm all of a sudden I realize that I'm about five. And I can see the cross through the bushes. I'm kind of around the corner. And I'm 
I'm hiding. And I have my piece of paper. And I'm hiding behind the bush. And it's like, I can see you, Lord. I can see. I can see your cross. I have my paper. Can you come and get it from me? But the instructions were to take it to him. And I was thinking of all these scriptures that I've heard as a child my whole life. If you deny before man, I'll deny you before my Father which is in heaven. And I'm thinking, I'm hiding behind the cross? Am I ashamed? Why am I hiding behind the cross? I've got my list. I've got my list. I've done my job. I was obedient to my teacher in my classroom. And yet still, I was hiding behind the Lord with Bush, waiting for the Lord with my list of all the things I had to give to him, with all the things. And so I'm still trying to play this off as being real cool. And so I, you know, everybody throws their list before and they're all, you know, Ray Amen. And, and they're like getting it. And I'm still a five-year-old and I'm still crouched behind this bush. I can't get to the cross and I'm stuck and I can't get to the cross and I'm saying, Lord, here I am. Can't you see my list? Can't you see where my heart is broken? Can't you see what I need? Can't you see what I need? Why aren't you coming to get my list? Why? I feel broken here. I feel lost. Lord, do I not belong at the foot of your cross? Have you not saved me? Have you not set me free? Why am I bound to my list? Why am I bound to my list? And he said, you have bound yourself to your list. Come out from behind the bush and give it to me. I said, what? I thought it was you. He said, no, it's you. And he said, you are my daughter. You're my daughter. I would never deny you taking what's bound you up. I would never deny you. And I said, what? I said, fill me up, Lord. Fill me up. Here's my list. Here's my, take my list. Take my list. I'm his daughter. I'm his daughter. He said, you're a son. He said, you're his daughter. You're his daughter. Where's your list? Where's your list? Get you're his son. You're his daughter. There's freedom. Fill us up, Lord. Fill us up, Lord. Fill us up. You know, before, because I, I really believe that we, we need to sing this song. Let me just say something. You know, in Genesis, there was another account when God shows up. And Adam and Eve were hiding behind their bush. And God called them out and said, where are you? Not because he didn't know where they were, but just to bring light to light that there was shame. And because of their shame, they had hidden themselves behind the bush when all God was looking for was a moment of intimacy. So let me just invite you to get out from behind your bush. Because God already knows that you're naked. But He wants to clothe you with His righteousness. He wants to consume your life. He wants to move and fill you this morning. Come on, Demetrius.
Hallelujah. Hebrews 12, 29 says, Our God is a consuming fire. Did you hear me? Listen, I, we've got a really great message today. And I'm just going to tell you something. We're not going to get to it. <laughs> uh, you know, I would be an absolute rebel if I fail to recognize the presence of God in the house. So, you know, I've been preaching for 38 years. I don't have to preach today because God's talking. Amen? So let me read a passage of scripture to you that a dear friend of mine just texted me a little while ago as church was starting. Come to me, all who, are, well, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Come to me, all you who labor and are kind of beaten up. Anybody in this house a little beaten up today? Come on now. I mean, everybody, because life happens. Amen? And so in the good times and the bad, our God is a consuming fire. And he's not trying to burn you up. He's trying to burn everything up around you to set you free. We sang a while ago, love came down and set me free. Now, anybody in this house need to be set free today? Set free of pain, set free of disease, set, set free of grieving and, and mourning. The Bible says God will give you a, a, just a, a clothing of joy and gladness for your, for your mourning. Mourning's real and valid. Amen. So we're going to open up this altar. I want our prayer teams to come. We're just going to see what God does. Listen, there's messages to preach, offerings to take, but you know what? It's all, and I'm sure I speak for Pastor Jay. I think we're in this together, amen? We want to see God do something. We didn't come here today to sing a song and hear a message and leave the same as we came in. We didn't do that. We did not do that. And you might have think that somebody just talked to you to coming in here or, or you're just here because this is where you go week after week. Today's different. Today's different. You're going to get a touch from God. It's going to change your life. It's going to burn up all the dross. And you're going to be set free. Amen. You ready for that? Hallelujah. We want to pray for some people. We want to pray for a little nine-year-old girl who's in the hospital in Pensacola struggling to breathe this morning. Amen. And so just agree with me for Casey Colquitt that God, that, that God will just open up her lungs, that God, just as he breathed life into us, he's breathing life into her lungs right now at that hospital in Pensacola. I pray for her mom and her daddy that are with her. You know, if you've got children, you know, you know what they're going through. So everybody just take a deep breath and open up your lungs. Thank God you could do that and just, just release that to Pensacola to her. Just breath in her lungs. Amen. We want to give thanks this morning. Why don't we just give thanks to God for his presence in this house today? You know, why don't we just give thanks to God? You know, listen, I'm done asking God to show up. I'm just asking God to give me the boldness to get out of the way when he does. Amen. So thank God that we're getting out of the way today and letting him in the house. Amen. So thank you, Lord. And why don't we just thank him also for what he's going to do in these next few moments. We're going to ask you, Lord, would you just release the Holy Spirit in this building and do what you do best. Amen. Do what you do best. Now, Father, I pray that every spirit of fear and vanity and pride, that God, that I just rebuke all that that would get in the way of all of us that need to come this morning. It's probably all of us, that all of us would not care who's looking, who's watching, who's around, that we would defeat even our own ego and pride and we would run to this altar because this is where your help is. It's not from me, but it's from God who rules and reigns and is a consuming fire. I don't know about you, but I've been walking with the Lord a long time, and I'm kind of tired of status quo, aren't you? Well, there's six of us. That'll be fine. The Lord will bless the socks off of all six of us. Amen? Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask the team just to keep leading us. We'll keep worshiping. I want to pray for Dan and Donna. They'll be leaving tomorrow for several weeks, driving all the way out west. Going to be grandparents for the first time. Sure took your kids long enough, didn't it? Hallelujah. So let's just celebrate that, right? They got a very pregnant daughter out there. They're going to be gone. We're going to miss them. Amen. But they'll be here. And a whole bunch of other things on my plate. I want to thank God for uh, 
Bruce Smiles, is that his name? Joe and Michelle, Michelle playing violin, Joe painting this morning, what a blessing. Had a little, had a little grandson yesterday, amen? You see, God, look, God's in control of this whole thing. Look, if, if, if it was all over, God wouldn't keep sending babies. you hear me? Is anybody in the house other than me? Listen, he's absolutely sovereign and in control. And I'm grateful for that. And I, I just want us just, I, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but Juan, we just want to reach out to you today, brother, and just bless you. Just put your hand up. Pray for this, brother. We just want to bless this brother. Bless him with grace and peace, and we pray for his babies. Mama just went to heaven. Amen. Mama just went to heaven. But you know what? We rejoice that Mommy's in heaven this morning. So we pray for Bruce and the babies, or for Juan and the babies, that they'll just be set free. One sweet day, we'll all be together. Listen, there's ministry all over this house today. So let's just keep worshiping a little while longer. If it's not your cup of tea, just sit back, get out of the way, and let God move. Come on, the altars are open. Get down here, get down here. We'll pray for you if you want us to pray for you. We'll lay hands on you if you need that. These altars are open. I'll tell you what, you don't need anybody. Just make that move. Be bold enough to make that move and see what God does this morning. There you go. There you go. Come on.
You know, there's an accountant. Sister, and God, I just pray even at my touch, her faith would be honored. And Peter and John had recently been arrested and taken to the high council. They were beaten all for the, all for the reason of teaching and preaching the name of Jesus. And the scripture records in Acts that after this had all happened, they had received their persecution for preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus. And they were told never to preach or teach again in his name. They went back and reported to the other disciples and the church there what had occurred. And, were, and it's recorded that, the, that they all gathered together and began to pray. This is not Acts chapter 2. This is after Acts 2. And the scripture records that as they were praying, the Holy Spirit shook the place that they were praying. And the Holy Spirit filled them with power and boldness. With boldness. Now, one has to stand and, and, and inquire, well, why did the Holy Spirit empower them with boldness? Because there was an opportunity in light of what had just happened prior for there to be intimidation that would run rampant through the church and it would drive the disciples and drive the church underground and prevent the church from rising up and to declare the name of Jesus in the open marketplace. So the Holy Spirit said, no, we're not going to let this happen. So let me move on my people with boldness. Now listen, how many of you would agree with me that we live in a day and age where there is every attempt of the enemy to drive the church to a place of intimidation so it will not boldly proclaim the name that is above every name. The name that has given by which all men might be saved. How many of you realize it is the name of Jesus Christ? And you and I, we have all been called and commissioned to preach and teach in His name. Say, well, Pastor, you just don't know what that may cost me. Yes, I do. It may cost you and I our very life. Well, Pastor, that's not a very feel-good message. No, that's just the truth. But how many of you realize that the power of the Holy Spirit wants to embolden you and I this morning so that when we walk out these doors, that the name of Jesus is not just a name that echoes within the four walls of this building because it's what we do on a Sunday morning, but we declare the name of Jesus everywhere we go so that every place that our feet plants, every place that we walk, every place that we walk into, every person we meet begins to know that name because we speak it with boldness. Well, Pastor, I just don't know what to say. The beauty of the Holy Spirit is Jesus even said himself, don't worry about what you, what, what you will say when that moment comes. Because when that moment comes, the Holy Spirit will give you the very words that you need to say. So I want to ask this question. Because I believe we're in a moment that the Holy Spirit is ministering. You may have come wanting a pastor to minister, but I'm here to tell you that one much greater than any pastor is here. It is the Holy Spirit of the living God. Come on, church. And if the Holy Spirit is present in this place to minister to you and I, I want to ask this question. Are you in this place and you struggle with a spirit of intimidation because of the time and the place that we're living? Or do you struggle when it comes to really lifting up 
and proclaiming the name of Jesus in the school place, in the marketplace, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, in your community? Are you intimidated to speak that name because of what it might cost you? I'm here to declare to you this morning that the Holy Spirit is present to embolden you and to encourage you, to strengthen you and empower you to boldly proclaim His name. You say, Pastor, well, that's me. I'm, I'm intimidated. I, I have to admit, I'm going to say, yes, I am intimidated. Well, you don't have to leave here intimidated. You don't have to leave here fearful. You can leave here empowered. Not by the, not by the hand of any man, but by the breath of the living God. So I'm going to ask this morning, if that's you, the first step that you and I have to take is the one from, from out of our pride and say, okay, I need, I need the Holy Spirit to embolden me this morning. I need the Holy Spirit. We were singing, I, this is why I believe the whole, the whole direction of the Holy Spirit this morning has been to the focus and theme consume my life consume my life fill me up Lord fill me up the less there is of myself then the more there is of you Amen. so if that's you I want you to remove yourself even if you're seated I want you to remove yourself from where you are flood this flood this altar because we want to pray over you and we want to see the Spirit of God move on you in such a way that you will be emboldened you will be empowered to to declare the name of Jesus so if that's you come on as a worship team just sings the song you're responding up here I just want you just to fill this front just come on move on up fill this front and just begin to lift your hands and I still believe that there are still others that the Holy Spirit is ministering to do not do not miss the invitation of grace this morning do not miss the invitation of grace this morning hallelujah prayer teams please hallelujah it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, it's time. No place I'd rather be. Jesus. No place I'd Jesus. Be. No place Jesus. I'd be. The here in your love, here in your love. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. Here in your love, here in your love Set a fire down in my soul That I can't contain and I can't control Y'all listen up to this young, young lady as she speaks something this morning to us um, I just wanted to say, I don't know if you guys remember me Talking about summer camp when I got back um, this is like, he was talking about being bold and felt like this was me being bold and I'm really nervous right now. So, <laughs> um, I just wanted to say that so many people got healed at summer camp and that was because they stepped out and they were bold enough to go up and give all of their faith and all of their beliefs and trust in the God and they truly believe and that's when they got healed physically and emotionally. I got healed emotionally because I stepped out 
and I just gave it all to God and I got out of my comfort zone and that's when I truly truly started to believe and I got healed so that's all I wanted to say and I hope that everyone has the heart to just come up here if they're dealing with anything emotionally or physically and that they need a healing from God because it is amazing his name
Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, set a fire. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more. is impossible. There's no need that you can have that he will not meet. So come to him and ask.
you did today. Yes. Lord, I know that it far exceeded anything I saw. I want to thank you for what I saw, but I know that you're a loving father and you haven't stopped. This, I just pray this becomes absolutely infectious. For those of you that were touched today, I just pray God as you're leaving here in a moment that the anointing will just keep coming. Just keep coming. Just keep coming. We walk out, this is just a building. Yeah. This is just a building. Yeah. When you walk out, the Spirit of God, the love of God. Look at your Bibles, come back next week. We bless you. We bless you. Bless God does this again. I'm gonna teach on the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, amen. Gentleness, patience, long suffering, faithfulness self-control, goodness. You know, that's the nature of God. Anybody feel the love or the joy or the peace of God today? Hallelujah. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Well, all you, uh, all you boys here, I read your stuff all the time and it says, they saw the opportunity and jumped in, amen? Did you see the opportunity today? God's so much more than religion or church. He's so much more. He's a consuming fire. Amen. I'm going to be real. Can I be real honest with you? I want to release you in the name of Jesus, but the Baptist in me tells me I better take an offering before we leave. 
because somebody got to pay for these bills. <laughs> I love God and I trust God, but guess what? If you feel led, we got off track a little bit today. Or let, me, let me repent from that. We did not get off track today. We just didn't do what we thought we were going to do. Amen. And if that's cool with you, welcome to Gateway City Church. Amen. So if you need an envelope, stick your hand up. We'd love to give you five of them, okay? And let's just honor God because, you know, giving, you say, man, they took a collection. No, we kept worshiping. We kept worshiping. Because as I'll teach us next week, Genesis 126, God said, never changed his plan. God said, let us make man in our image. And if we're going to be like him, then we're going to be givers. If we're going to be like him, we got to get loose of our pocketbooks. Amen. And we've got to, and we've just got to give. We've just got to give. And so I want to bless you as you give today. I want to speak to your finances. I want to pray God, even if you're at a comfortable place, that even if, even if we're comfortable, <laughs> that you would just bring in, just crazy increase crazy increase. I declared over this house. I declared over this house. Father, we're out there with you. We're trusting you. We've taken some giant leaps of faith and we just praise you that you're a God that never disappoints. And so you know our needs and we want to bless you because you meet every need. So increase. Everybody just lay hands on yourself and say increase. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Now our offering plates are on either side of the altar. We're not going to come snatch it out of your hand. This pastor's just done. Put your offering in up here. Come on, let's just keep worshiping. Say hi to a bunch of folks as you're coming or going. Michelle, play or something. And let's just worship him through yes. offering. Amen. He is good this Hallelujah. You 
are good and I shout because you are good, you are good.